All right, um, been working for the last few minutes. Got these all done. Now I got the three jaw chuck on. I want to tell you something about this chuck now. Uh, on a subject of chucks. Now this is an eight inch chuck and it has removable or replaceable jaws. Now when you go to get it by a chuck, of course I'm talking about the small one, you know, something six inches or bigger. Even they have five inch ones, but six inches or bigger. You should really buy one with removable jaws where you can put steel, regular steel soft jaws, so they call them, like this. And you can machine them. They're machinable jaws. Now it also has the master jaw. This is the master jaw. And you can reverse it around one way or the other. And the reason why you need those, that's master jaw, they're called the hard jaws. The master jaws are in here. And they're numbered, one, two, three. The reason why is that, if you notice, you can see little steps in here. Now, you want to make collets. I've got a whole complete set of collets over here, all the way up to two inches, by sixty-fourths of an inch. And they're hard-inch collets. There isn't any other, in my opinion, for, for work. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to face these jaws out and bore them out so it fits this. And it just grabs on, oh, maybe like an eighth of an inch. And... Now, when I go to do the actual heads, the casting, I'm going to use the same jaws. And what that what, what that's for is you can you can get a real you can you could uh, the, the advantage of it is that you can get just a little bit of a material grabbing that and hold it. And plus, it's flat in here, so it's going to keep it from cocking. So do yourself a favor. The jaw, the the chucks are more expensive, but they're worth every bit of getting them because it's going to save you. Uh, a lot of collets, different collets. You can't really get collets, but you can. But, you know, 5C collets. I have collets that are this big around. But um, uh, they're not always the best. You can get them with a special collet. Yeah, I know all that. I know all that. Uh, but for all general round purposes, you're better off with the soft jaws. The thing of it is, you can't measure them unless they're close enough together where you can actually measure them. So what you have to do is go by the readout or by the dials, by the dials, the dials here, there's a dial on the carriage and there's a dial on the, um, so now I'm going to go over here and I got a nice dirty tool I'm going to rough it with and I'm going to go 24 thousandths in and I'm going to just put the feet on and I'm watching the, 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 the longitudinal of the X because if it jumps then I know that this boot out of the way. That's another reason why I was talking about doing the spokes on the driver. Remember that? Well, the same thing. It jumps around. You got to lock the carriage. So we're now we're going to go out and uh, we're going to face the jaws up. One thing I got to mention is I'm I got a piece chuck in the middle there. You can see it. Any kind of stock. Now yes, they make the little rings. A bunch of washers. They get like two hundred dollars for the set of washers. You can use anything. Anything will fit in there. So we're going to go back to zero and get the eighth of an inch out of there so we're close. And I'm just roughing it now with this heavy duty tool. That's a hundred thousandths right there. Let's see what that is. One thing about wearing an apron, I wear an apron to keep my clothes clean, but it could be dangerous. I can tell you a story about that when I was at De Laval, I was over here, and my apron, the end of my apron caught around the street screw, it was pulling me down. If I didn't have an emergency stop, I would have wrapped myself up in the machine. It wasn't going fast, but it was enough to get in trouble. I want to zero this out, zero that out, see where I'm at. And you got to have a sharp corner down in there, so what I'm going to do is put a tool in and just a short little boring bar and go in and just take a skim cut and dig in to the face a little bit so you got a sharp corner. And just slowly come out because it's tapered. Take a little bit of a cut. I'm going to go in. Come in. Don't go too much, a little bit at a time. Okay, way out. That's it. I got it chucked up. 
and uh, we're going to turn it, face it, do whatever we got to do. Get the two pieces made, then we'll move on. Get it to the diameter I want. Determine, determine what we're going to make it, and uh, with this one we can mic up, get a rough idea, right on the edge, around 5 eighths, that's probably do it, I'm going to turn it anyway, that's why I'm going to dig in a little bit and I'm going to come back out, let's take a light skin. We're back now. Uh, all the lathe work is done, and um, got the pieces here. Take a look at them. Oop, drop one. That's the end of that. I guess it's okay. Get this one up. I got to put the two ears on here, which are you know they have to be tapered all four directions and glue them on. Then once they get glued on, I'll drill a nice small hole in there and put a couple of reinforcement nails on there to hold them on. Because they could get broken off when you're uh, when they pound the sand around. All right, now this one, if you recall, I could hold it on that. I probably could. But uh, I'm going to just just attempt to put it on a belt sander, this sander rather, on a couple degree and just go around. Now the reason why I marked that is that when I sand it, I can see if the mark's still there. The mark disappears that I know I'm there. So I'm going to go over here on a disc sander, out of the picture. Oh right, yeah, I got that done. And uh... Pretty close to the same size. It doesn't matter. Way, way over that I need. And uh, just get a little sandpaper. Touch them up. Get some of the dingleberries off it. I use a lot of sandpaper. I bought this sandpaper about 20 years ago. I pulled a pack of it. I still got it. I just sand them around like that. Shouldn't be sanded by my microphone. And just knock off this. Now that's done. Okay, well, we'll see you on the next part, which will be uh, part three of making the cylinder pattern. This is probably going to wind up become five-part piece, I'm sure. So, uh, thanks for watching.